Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We begin tonight with the weather and a lot of green on exact track 4D radar right now. Now take a live look outside from our Windsor Sky Cam. You should be able to see the Detroit skyline, but rain and fog have taken over. Thanks everybody for joining us here at five. I'm Karen Drew in for Devin Scillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. Let's start things off with Ron Hilliard looking like more of the same for the weekend, right, Ron? We're looking at some very nice conditions across the area. You can see, or I should say, You know what, Ron? I don't mean to interrupt, but you're having a microphone issue. So let's check back with you in a moment. But first, let's start with another big story. Order finds the route, location, and design of the Line 5 replacement segment is reasonable oh, and is a significant improvement mm -hmm. over the dual pipeline configuration. Oh. A major decision just made hours ago. Michigan officials approved the $500 million Line 5 pipeline tunnel project under the Mackinac Straits, and emotions are running high right now. The state's three-person Public Service Commission okayed the project this afternoon, while opponents voiced their concerns and anger to the commission, saying this decision endangers the environment. And we've been covering this issue extensively, and reaction has been pouring in just in the past couple of hours. So let us be clear, the plan still needs approval from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, but today's vote is major news. The order finds that there is a public need for Line 5 products, and a public need for the replacement project to protect the resources of the Great Lakes. And with that decision, Enbridge is one step closer to being allowed to encase a four-mile portion of a tunnel that runs under the Mackinac Straits and connects two Great Lakes. I know that many of you will be disappointed by the decision, but I can genuinely say that your comments, <coughs> whether in writing, verbally, here in person, or over the phone, our teams did make this process better. We've shown you what the project is about. So there are seven cameras strategically placed around the straits to monitor these vessels going over the pipeline and took you inside Enbridge's monitoring facility. This pipeline, again, never supposed to run past some 45 years, has now been in operation for 70 years. We showed you the opposition as well as the push to make this change from Enbridge. It enhances safety at, at the straits uh, because the pipeline will be in the tunnel deep below the lake bed, you eliminate the chance you're ever going to have any kind of anchor strike and you virtually eliminate the chance you're ever going to have uh, any kind of product get out into the water. Today, the commission said allowing the Canadian company to encase the tunnel would be the best way to mitigate the risk of a spill. It virtually eliminates the risk of anchor strikes and the tunnel will serve as secondary containment to prevent the product from reaching the streets. Opponents were outraged. This is not a reasonable solution. It's a phony solution. Basically putting a Band-Aid on the tunnel. And you could choose the death route, but none of us agree with it. Have you seen and ignored? And why make this public commission anyway if it's planned out to disagree with us? Yeah. Literally planned out for Lots of opposition there, right? Well, there is a lot of reaction to this. I'll give you a sampling. The Groundwork Center sent a statement reading in part, green lighting this tunnel simply trades one set of extreme risks for another. There is no other tunnel like this in the world and for good reason. Given Enbridge's terrible track record of repeated safety failures and spills, it is shocking that Michigan regulators would approve this half-baked proposal. We are trading a ticking time bomb for an actual one. Meantime, a spokesperson for Enbridge said in part, the MPSC carefully examined this complex issue and considered many viewpoints, questions, concerns, and ideas. Ultimately, the MPSC agreed with its staff's conclusions that Line 5 transports critically needed energy for Michigan and the region, and placing the Line 5 pipeline in the Great Lakes Tunnel better protects the Great Lakes. Now, to see my extensive report on Line 5, all you need to do is go to the Local 4 Plus app, look for Line 5 under the New Releases tab, and as we always say, we'll be covering this. Yeah, a lot of passionate feelings. Right? You normally sides. don't yeah. see that kind of wide oh, range of right, ages. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, we want to get back over to Ron. Yes, he's got the microphone issue squared away, and that's a good thing because you've got a lot to talk about, Ron. Yeah, a lot to talk about. So, 
much like my mic, it gets better, the weather. We have right now on Campus of Marshes some improvement. We do have mist out there and some fog. Temperatures right now coming in across the area in the lower 40s, with some of us seeing temperatures in the upper 30s. Now, the thing is, we have visibility issues out there. Of course, it's now dark and getting even gloomier out there. Of course, we have fog right now down to two miles uh, with the visibility in Pontiac, also the same for Ann Arbor. Now we have the fog and the mist continuing, but the rain is easing up some, and that rain snow line is now farther toward the north. You had to go up into northern parts of the thumb to encounter it. So, as that track 4D radar showing that the roads across the area are pretty much going to be full of rain. You have to get the snowfall into places like Tuscola County here in Metro Detroit, though. Here it is. It is wet across the area. So make sure you're still allowing extra time because of those wet conditions out there. So here's where we're going to be talking up in a couple of minutes. More rain on the way and also over the weekend we have more on the way. OK, Ron, we'll check back in with you in just a bit. The House has voted to expel Republican Congressman George Santos, making him only the sixth lawmaker ever to be kicked out of the chamber. The resolution required two thirds majority vote to succeed. 311 members of the House voted to expel him. Another 114 voted against the expulsion. This comes after the House Ethics Committee released a report in November concluding Santos sought to fraudulently exploit every aspect of his House candidacy for his own personal profit. Some sad news to report uh, tonight. Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court, has passed away. The court says she died due to complications from dementia. Then President Ronald Reagan appointed her back in 1981. She was a moderate conservative who upheld abortion rights and affirmative action. O'Connor's legacy lives on in the countless female lawyers she inspired. Among them are the five women who followed in her footsteps as justices of the Supreme Court. Israel's military has resumed combat operations in Gaza today after the end of its truce with Hamas, accusing the militant group of violating the deal. The week-long ceasefire saw the release of more than 100 hostages held in Gaza and 240 Palestinians held in Israeli jails. Today, Israeli forces bombarded multiple areas and the flow of aid into Gaza has stopped. Intermediaries say they're not giving up their push for a more lasting ceasefire. Detroit police have a new plan to be more transparent when it comes to police shootings and other forms of deadly force. Our Kim DeGiulio reports on the changes the department is rolling out. Now, this move is all about transparency. DPD announcing yesterday that anytime there's a shooting involving an officer, they'll release the video on their YouTube channel within 45 days. And on the heels of that announcement, they released a video of an officer involved shooting that happened back on October 20th. 1185, you already got one shot, fire shots. Hey, hands up! Hands up! Yeah, get down! Sir, get down! Jump the gun! We pause the moment right before a Detroit police officer opens fire. This happened October 20th, when a funeral on the city's east side turned into a fight between family. In the videos released by police, it shows two men shooting into the crowd. That's when two officers respond. One officer shot four times, striking one of the gunmen. His injuries were not life-threatening. Both suspects were taken into custody. This briefing is to ensure our values are met and that we are transparent about critical incidents. In the video released on YouTube, DPD explains its process for the investigation. The department's move to release videos within 45 days came the same day the police board of commissioners voted on an ordinance to force DPD to release videos of police shootings or other instances of deadly force. So as it stands right now, they will release that video within 45 days. However, that ordinance will go to city council. If that's approved, then it will take 12 days for DPD to release their video of an officer-involved shooting. Reporting outside of Detroit Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Okay, thanks, Kim. And there are similar ordinances in places such as Chicago and Los Angeles. All right. It's going to be a huge weekend of mm. football. Plenty on the line for the Lions and the Wolverines. Yeah, Bernie's here with us. Uh, I guess we should start with Michigan. Yeah, good one right. in Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah, Big Ten title game tomorrow night. Michigan faces Iowa. Uh, Wolverines favored by 22. Michigan headed to the college playoffs for the third year in a row with a win over the Hawkeyes. Running back Blake Corum says Michigan is playing for so much more than just a Big Ten title. 
But having a team that, you know, set so many goals at the beginning of the season, we've already been through a lot, we've reached goals, you know, like the eyes on the prize, you know, and the eye doesn't leave the prize. And we know if we want to get to where we want to go, we have another goal to reach, you know, and so uh, it's, it's kind of easy for this team just because, you know, we love the game. That's for sure, huh? Played well. They're unbeaten this year. Sunday, it's the Lions against the Saints in New Orleans. Lions still favored by four and a half. Hobie Arteague reports from Allen Park. Lions know what they got to do to make the bounce back happen. The long and winding road of this season continues on Sunday for the Lions, but on the road is where this team has played well this season, something they now try to carry to New Orleans with four of their final six games away from Ford Field. With the exception of that Ravens game, the Lions have looked good on the road, going 4-1. and one. Success they hope to have here in the backstretch of the season. Being able to stay consistent and just stay calm, you know, stay poised in the moment. I think that's what we've done a really good job of. It's felt like home for the Lions defense outside of Detroit, but they'll be dealing with changes on Sunday. Without Alex Anzalone, rookie Jack Campbell is going to wear the green dot helmet, getting in the place from the sideline. He wants it all. You know, he wants it all. He doesn't want anybody to think that, man, I can't, I can't take this job description on. It's on one guy to get the call in, but on an entire defense to answer. Keeping him calm, understanding that he got his vet like me that's going to help simplify a lot of the calls and uh, help, help him out with the coverage. So, and that's where I, I thrive. Whoever's wearing that green dot to echo the calls and to help him with the signals, it's, 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 it's a 11 man thing. The Saints are a team at a crossroads of sorts, sitting at five and six. But Dan Campbell wants his team to stay on their own path, trying to get back in the win column. Don't get too high or too low. Shoot, there may be a turnover. It's all right, man. Put it behind you. Let's go to the next play. And, We've done a good job of that. In Allen Park, OBRT, Local 4. All right, that's a 1 o'clock kickoff on Sunday and the uh, Michigan-Ohio game tomorrow night at just after 8 o'clock. Michigan, Ohio, not Michigan. Michigan, oh, Michigan Iowa. Michigan. What did I say, Ohio? You did. You were just still, <laughs> still, I'm still, st I'm still stuck on last Saturday. Yeah, exactly. 